Welcome, this is Tea Time on Floss TV Africa, where we bring to you and analyze the biggest sentiment stories. My name is Elsie Godwin, and I have my very interesting co anchor to me, Ife Omai. And Ife Olu Oshunke. I'm going? all right. Great, great, great. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So, Madonna is optimistic she will dance again after knee surgery. She's still on crutches and post-surgery and undergoing rehab treatment at home. She underwent regenerative treatment to fix the problem that plagued her on the road throughout her recent Madam X tour. I didn't know it was that serious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I had know. no idea. Yeah, it's, and I'm not... I mean, it would be nice for you to be able to do what you love again. So, I'm really hoping mm -hmm. for that. But in the comment section, I saw someone mention that, you know, with the age and the knee, it's going to be hard Why to recover. Go there? Yeah, and I kind of, like, gauged it to be that maybe shall, but there's nothing Madonna She's cannot 61. do. Madonna oh. is, like, she ha she an aging. They don't see eye to eye. So I will not be surprised if she can go back to dancing. I just obviously want her to be really careful while she's doing that because, but like they say, age is not a number. You know, we're all used inside. So she wants to dance. She should she dance. can dance at heart. In my opinion, there's levels to it. Of course, she can even dance when she's 90, when she's 95, when she's 100. Anyone it's the type can of dance. dance that's yeah, mm. what type of dance this can dance. you dance, though? Yeah. That's all the Nigerian parents. That's <laughs> all they know. No, let's put it better. Nigerian 61 years old. That's yeah. Parents, dance. <laughs> that's <the> dance. <laughs> well, so, depending on um, how energetic the dance is, so mm. it's really the time everybody can dance. I still want to be dancing. Of course, I'll still be dancing at the age of. Yeah, but you know the dance talking oh. about now. Did you get? If I she gave you an example, she didn't just talk about dance. Come on, she just went to wine and dance. pop and. Yeah, she just said that. That's a motivation for her. It's not that she still wants to go back and do that. She wants to skateboard. It's the interpreting the dance. She doesn't want to go on stage and perform. Her optimism. So we're listening. She wants to perform, of course, but I don't. You think on performance she'll be doing Nigerian? 61 year old dance like like she'll be she like game 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 break dance you know split get up game turn around yourself, <laughs> respect your blue tick <laughs> oh you have a blue tick now that's what we learned yesterday please what's the blue ah, tick mm, don't worry we'll you, explain you, you, you all the blue. viewers will fill you in <laughs> <laughs> okay so, so um move, you want to say something else um i just believe that um depending on the dance and i wish you the best of luck and i wish everyone watching that may your dancing shoes never be Rested. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wonder how you'd be at 61. Your I'll wahala will be plenty. I'll still dance. What? Uh, I'll still dance. No, you would dance, but your wahala. Mm -hmm. I think so. Mm -hmm. I think people around me, you just just be patient. I, I will be, that would be the first thing I need if you want to work around me. Patience for my wahala. Mm. Right. Okay. So moving on to Ubi Franklin. He says he attempted suicide several times three years ago. From his long episode, it's basically about him being bullied on social media. I don't think this is the first time he has shared this story, is this? Is this um, but this story time? became important to share over Izu's issue that right. was um, in hmm. July 18th that read out his um, suicide notes. Why did it become important for him to share this story? It became important because that, that that's relate. a guy you can relate to it. It's the same story. He said he has done. He when he was watching the video. I don't know if you watched Izu's video. Did you watch it exactly? I, I that's why you would understand. So if you watched Izu's video, you would understand what he meant. It was people wrote about it, and I understand what happened in the video. But I don't need to subject myself to watching the video. I mean, I, I think um, people need to understand what can break them and not try to go further because they want to do what everybody's doing so that's the reason i didn't watch it because i feel like i cannot handle watching something like that basically mm -hmm. so it's not about under I, mean, I understood what, what happened in the video so i think what he was trying to say in this is that um he is been in his own shoes or he is saying himself but has he has he really that's, that's what, what he's telling I, us I, I we don't know, don't know. you don't I, know I, I and don't, this is personal i don't, I don't think we should question know. people's um, mental health, especially when they are telling you that I've been suicidal and then you see people say, has he? No, no, I don't think that's the right mm -hmm. question to ask right now. I think we should be worried that an Ubi Franklin that we see him to be quite successful has actually contemplated suicide. Whether so or not... It was based on online bullying that he wanted to commit suicide. Yeah, and he gave instances of why and, we, and I'm sure we all saw that bullying, that period. Yes, it was his mistakes. Yes, it was his life. Yes, and but we were, we were all witnesses to the online bullying that Ubi Franklin mm -hmm. experienced. I know I saw it. Yeah, I did too. I'm not going to lie. 
Um, I don't think he has the best reputation on social media. Um, and I, I don't think that's anybody else's fault. But I, I don't know. There's something... I'm not saying it's a, it's a clean-cut thing, though, but I feel like when somebody comes out to have, say their issue, or like, for example, Izu coming to share on social media, he's suicide making a video and then that tweet that he had and then you're now saying but me too I, I, don't, I don't know me too i also for somebody who has died you're clearly here so it's different i don't know i don't know sha but i mean he said he wasn't successful mm, okay we well, thank god for that and then, and again he ended it with an advice to people that look That's taking your life is, is not an option that look you you're not the first to go through all of this thing so it's not like you just shared it like i've been in a shoe yeah, but, yeah, I, just over, about the messenger but I, the but I over right. exactly but i, but I overcame it have, because i figured out he could that have given it that has, advice instead of trying to form i was there as well i, I think mean, so he too. could for have me, boys, cool. for me. I, i'm but, always very skeptical about that it's like when somebody comes out to say that they've missing, they've had an experience. I don't think it's every time. Even if I've shared the exact same thing, I don't think it's always necessary to also now use that opportunity. Like let the let's just focus on the focus at the moment because then we have to start comparing. It's almost like a competition of whose story is worse than the other. I don't know. Sometimes it can come across as that. I'm not sure that's the intention with Ubi, but for me, the story is more about Izu. I don't know if I use Izu. That. Izu is how you say his name. Um, I think it's really devastating what's happening. I think we need to also start to make a lot more, um, will I say a lot more strict out um, correction um, things in, put in place for people who come out to falsely accuse someone. I looked at the, the tweet of the lady over and over, because now it's deactivated, over and over and over and over and over about why she would do what she did, because she made a list, the intentions were really good. Um, even f whether or not she claims to be a feminist or whatever. But I think one thing that was lacking in the whole story was empathy. Because why would you make a list about rapists, serious rapists? That all, all of them have been confirmed. I know three of them on the list as well. And I know one of the victims really closely, that like this person had, had abuse. Like, we're talking about awful. It's an awful list with mm -hmm. a bunch of people. And then you put a boy who harassed somebody, quote-unquote, but not in a physical way. I'm so sorry, but you can't compare both. the same thing. I'm right one list for both of them. Like you can't compare a rapist, a cut, like someone that has been caught on camera and everything, to somebody who claims that she, that she was um, assaulted mentally. Like it's a different list. We'll have a conversation about that another day. So it's for me to believe that she had good intentions when she was writing that list. It's Maybe it's, it's really difficult. Yeah. I, I'm, and I know that he said in his video, which I watched, was, there wasn't the gunshot part, which is why I was kind of preparing myself for, but that wasn't in the video because I thought it was part of the video. Okay. So watching the video and seeing everything, I, I liked that he also mentioned the fact that he had been battling with mental illness like two to three years before that. Mm. So that was the icing on the cake that in his, I guess in his, in his second mind, like the, well, obviously the mind is not very strong. He just had Couldn't that as a, as a um, trigger. No, not even he's a word as a like, almost like confirming that he doesn't deserve to live because mm. he's having that so I, so for me what i took out of the story because uh, um if i call me a coven now i'm i'm healing myself well there is that for me when i am going through the motion of um either attacking a rapist or false allegation i think be, i might be a bit more reserved in making sure that I have my facts right because I'm all for the cancel culture. I don't know. You can't give with your ancestors. I'm all for it. I'm all for calling the names. I'm all for canceling you. But I think it would be it, the devastation be of, yeah, of getting that wrong is very, is, yeah, it is, is. is quite bad. Um, may his soul rest in peace. It's sad that he had to do this and it had to happen. But um, as it has happened. There's nothing we can do. I just hope people learn their lessons. And I like the lesson you're picking for me as yeah. well. I think a lot of, um, I don't like using the phrase Twitter feminist, but in this conversation, I probably have to use it. They need to also pick that same lesson you have picked and um, kind of tread carefully because um, I've always said it that I'll always question anyone, whether you are the victim or you are the perpetrator. I always ask questions based on my own analysis of whatever story is being told, you know. So it's not supposed to be a perfect story, but um, let, it make sense. let it make sense and also tie up loose ends, basically. Yeah, you both picked up very good um, points, but I think uh, my own points that I picked up from all of this and it's actually from Ubi's post is the fact that, look, before you even consider taking your life or before you take your life, think about it. 
are these people worth dying for? These people you want to kill yourself for? Are, they mm. what, are these problems worth dying for? Is this mm. something that can be overcome? If yes, if you can answer that question with a yes, then you don't have to die. I'm sorry, I think that's exactly, when you said that's exactly the reason why I did not like Ubi's post, because um, I think, you, first of all, it's really insensitive to compare a struggle moment to a mental disorder. It's not, it's not the same. For people who have a struggle period maybe that advice works but then again it's not the right time because we're talking about somebody who had a mental problem advising that to people who actually struggle with mental illness is very insensitive and unfair if they saw it that rationally they would not be where they are so I, maybe again, this is just what they need to hear for them to see rationally it's hard to ask someone who has mental issues to see things. But you tell right. somebody who has mental issues to go see a therapist, Exactly. Right? Exactly. So what would the therapist tell them? I don't probably think you're a therapist, the so that's thing. not our conversation Yeah, to but have. that's what I'm telling you. Probably the same thing. Why? Are you a therapist? What they no, you can't say probably. Hear. Know it or don't I know said, it. If you know the meaning of probably, then you know I can say probably. No, you can't if you're not, if I'm, if you're not a therapist. That's why I said probably. Tea times continue right after the short break. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child. I decide every day. <laughs> <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like an Alibaba? Alibaba. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to dull. Everybody feeling alright. Still make music and people are still buying. That's how they look myself. Minimal, are you? Mm. Mm. music is for mature minded people. I got DM sometimes from my love. We like. <laughs> 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 Welcome back. This is Silty Time on Plus TV Africa. Genevieve Naji berates Jeremy Okolamo for mocking the Women Supporting Women Challenge. Um, she commented on his post saying, and I quote, we seek in humor, we seek humor to, yeah, we seek in humor to distract us from pain or discomfort. Tell me what it is you feel exactly. You see, that feeling that triggered you to make a joke of a movement that can only be understood by those it was meant for. The feeling of being overlooked and disregarded is part of the point of the challenge. No one likes to be to feel invisible. You felt it for a second. Women feel it every day of their lives. Let us hold our hands if we want to be okay with it. Not everything is about you or for laughs, end of quotes. And I think that um, this is not just about DM if this is the case. Don Jazzy will probably be mm. on the list and every other uh, man that have decided to... <sighs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't think using the word make a joke of it is... It doesn't work for me. I don't think their intention was to make a joke of the movements. Mm -hmm. I think they just saw something that they weren't part of and they wanted to just have fun. I mean, you have Snapchat helping you look like, I can look like a man on Snapchat and uh, a man can look like a woman on Snapchat. I get where she's coming from, I totally do, but I think she was just so much in her feelings for this one. I don't mm -hmm. know, that's how I feel. I, I'm on the wave, wavelength with her and I've heard it a lot of the times. I'm a lot in my feelings, so. I guess it's just a lot of people who are in their feelings, but I have to agree 100%. I liked what she brought out of that um, notion, and I like that she didn't do it in a bashful way to me. Because sometimes we do things when we're playing, and we do things in motion, but if you actually step aside and think harder as to why I did it, even me sometimes, with all my claims to be woke and progressive, I still have a lot of biases. Mm. And in joke, it will seem like... I didn't really think mm. about it, but if you do think about it, you realize where this thing is coming from. Um, I like that she brought out the idea of feeling really out of um, the, the crew, yeah, out of the clique. I think me as a woman, a dark-skinned woman, growing up, that's exactly how I felt. Um, is that there, there was a there was a crew that the society had kind of like made. And for you to get in there, you had to be really cool. And I just, I just didn't really fit into so it. So, is this about dark skin now or being a woman? Both. Okay, that's like a complicated mix. But yes, exactly. So, on. so <laughs> for me, that that because it's unique. It's unique to different people. Like the reason why I'm a woman and I have issues is not the same reason why you have an issue as a woman. It's all different and tailored to each individual. So, for me, I understand where she's coming from, and I think that as simple as it is, there's still a lot of meaning behind it. And I'm not. I don't think she's saying it that he's done anything offensive. But think about it. You 
use that opportunity. She actually to, sounded like he has done something offensive. You use that opportunity to think about how you felt when everybody was getting tags and there was black and white pages on your timeline. As simple as it is, and like, oh, why no, why is nobody tagging me? Mm -hmm. Like banter, but she's still right. That's how a lot of women feel when they're being marginalized in different ways of their lives every single day. So yeah, so maybe we might be catching feelings, but I know I'm on that wavelength, and I have to agree 100. Mm percent -hmm. Um, kind of in the middle on this one because um. I get where Genevieve is coming from, totally. and I also understand where the men are also coming from. Maybe the ones that wanted to make a joke out of it, I didn't get it. But in terms of sol in terms of solidarity with women, standing with women to fight for what they are fighting for, to let you know that men are solidly behind you mm. in this fight, mm. then if that's what some men are doing this for, then I don't think Genevieve should come out and write this type of statement. So it, depending on what you got from the But what, the what about vibe, this person that she replied to? What, you see this caption? what was in this caption? Oh, I wasn't tagged. I mean, I, I've, I've seen conversations from women also who are saying that a lot of women are joining this without knowing the reason for it. And I can say that is a whole lot of women. It's just a trend now that a lot of people are, are jumping up because they don't understand it. So would you, I mean, I, I'm not saying the men don't understand it. It's possible that they did understand why it was going on. But would you blame a man that decided to also jump on it because it's just a trend for not knowing what it is. If the women that are actually also jumping on it did not understand. So I, I mean, if they put out that picture and used a very derogatory caption, then I would understand mm. the anger or where this is coming from. Well, I get you see where, anger. Yeah, I did. Okay. I did. So if that was the case, it would uh -huh. be a different thing. But it was just an innocent thing. For me, that's how I feel. Well, for me, I just feel like um, it's 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 a two way thing. You yeah. get that's what I'm in between. I get where Genevieve is coming from. I get where some yeah. of the men are coming from. But the ones that are not actually there for support, that just want to use the Snapchat filter to look mm. like a woman and just jump on a bandwagon of a very serious issue, mm. is like somebody jumping on a rape when people are saying say mm. no to rape and mm. the person is saying say no to rape and you're posting something else that connotes maybe yeah. rape or abuse against women then we won't support such a post right Definitely. so i get where um genevieve is coming from yeah. and i respect dme for his yeah. response as well because mm -hmm. he has responded he apologized and he took it down he took down yeah, all took the posts and i really admire so that about i mean I honestly and i think i have to agree as well I th like i said i think you do think sometimes that doesn't it can be innocent but doesn't mean it is mm -hmm. um the idea of a, of women doing this this thing because I've heard even women saying, eh, "But the people that are posting they don't really support." It's it's not the point. I, we can't you can't say that because I fight for the women gender, every single woman is good. But the point is that women support each other, and we're trying to push the narrative out with this motive. What you want to define that as is up to you. But that's what the whole um, um, thread was, and it was for women. You could see that jumping on that to then minimize the conversation and make it a jest. Eh. It's not it that is, funny to it me. It is well. We, we, we will learn. Because <laughs> 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 I don't know. Well. When it comes it to really well women like, affairs, we really do not know so how to go about it. Mm. So maybe you guys can just write us a book, you know. A manual. Uh, women want no that manual, you won't be able to finish reading it. Can we and let us keep reading it now so that from from the moment you can read your nursery rhymes, you'll be reading it. I, I, I think it's not even just a thing of like learning a manual. I think just being able to have an honest conversation is important. Like if the woman genuinely the feels offended, never ends. the conversation never is ends. of course, even with your lover, that's not going to marry, do you think it's going to end? So why why can't you do that with the Having women? a honest conversation will mean that you acknowledge both parties' intentions. Of course. That is what I see as having an honest conversation of so you why you acknowledge it, then you also acknowledge that people can make mistakes and intentions can be misconstrued of as course. well basically and, and, but I like the fact that she didn't point it out like it was just DME she was addressing she didn't have to call the other names Don exactly. Jazzy and the rest she didn't have but she was addressing men mm -hmm. in general but DME is the one Don the Jazzy of is not an actor Oh, okay, I started doing skits. <laughs> Don Jazz is not an actor, so he, he probably doesn't have, or she's probably not even following him, mm. I don't know, but she's following DME, and DME sees her like a big sis mm. because in his response, he called her big sis and all of that. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just a misunderstanding, and we will always misunderstand and women, and they will always wave. misunderstand us, so we're sorry. We're and so I, sorry. I like how he responded. I think he got the message, and that was yeah, fine. Yeah, he got the message. Because even skits, it's the same thing. So people genuinely want to make you laugh. But maybe the way they presented something became offensive to someone who is painting them in their own show, and you don't know how it's painting you. So mm. it's okay. Like, you can't get offended with all your innocence, and that's all right.
Okay, moving on to the next story. You can be a feminist and also a prostitute as prostitution does not go against the concept of feminism. And this is coming from a Twitter user. I'm even confused. Is feminism a job or something? You can be a feminist and a freaking satanist. You can be a feminist and a teacher. Like, how does that even, like, correlate? Right. Uh, it's, it's mad to me. Maybe it's supposed to be a obvious, like, a cloud ch um, chase conversation. People are really wild by it. Like, I, I'm very confused. I think you can be a Christian and a prostitute. You can be a Christian and, like, like an occupation and a belief system or a movement cannot be compared so I'm guessing people just want to be wild, but for no reason, because I, yeah. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, see I don't the point. think that's the case, because this is, has been an ongoing conversation for years. It didn't just start now. This conversation didn't start. And I did extensive research on this particular topic, which is um, feminism and prostitution. And I discovered that we have anti-prostitution feminists, and we also have pro-prostitution feminists. Now, the anti-prostitution feminists hold that prostitution is a form of exploitation of women and male dominance over women, and a practice which is the result of the existing patriarchal society societal order and the pro prostitution feminists hold that prostitution and other forms of sex work can be valid choices for women and men who choose to engage in it mm -hmm. so we have two stands of feminists on this one okay. so which is why i said it's an ongoing no, and it's, then it's a, it's a it's an ongoing conversation it's if it's that one then there's a lot time. because there is a lot and of division in the feminism movement mm -hmm. for a lot of things that's why i didn't really see it as a big deal but looking at it on face value if you're not seeing it as a big deal do you think that a feminist looking Looking at what feminism is supposed to stand for, which is in in simple terms, mm. equality for men and women. Do you think that um, it should be allowed? A, a feminist should, of course, or can be a prostitute. I feel like the minute you start to. to tell a feminist what they can or cannot okay, do, basically, you, then you, you it means that you agree with what she said. Of course, saying. I do. I'm not I was talking about the reaction. I said because I, mm -hmm. I, I've, maybe maybe to take the audience with what, what my genuine response to was the big deal of the story, like how it was blown into proportion, basically in this part of the world, the patriarchal society. Of course, it will be blown out of proportion. Well, I and then a lot of a lot of feminists are also of the opinion that it's because of because these women are not getting equal rights as men. That's why a lot of them are even forced into prostitution. Yes, coercion. that's arguable. Do you that's understand? Coercion, yeah. coercion yeah. poverty. Do you understand? But then Those again, the we've seen that it's not. Okay, so you even see that prostitution is one of the oldest occupations we have in the world in the history of time, and it's not always always is because it the occupation our oldest form of trade. Oh, occupation, trade. trade. Which one? Trade. Because I've never heard anybody call it an mm -hmm. occupation. It, uh, well, it's a serious business. Um, uh, is it? It is. Um, and it's been there from the history of time. In all our arts uh, representation of history, we've seen it Even all from through. the Bible and all. It, yeah. uh, it's been, it's been mm -hmm. there. Um, and I, I don't think you... From, from what I've noticed, I don't think you can always put all the sex workers into the bracket of um, um, economic um, de deprivation. Mm -hmm. A lot of people with choice, informed decision, mm. wants that life. There's different levels and different means of, of prostitution. Some people prostitute their dance. Some people prostitute their, um, well, let's say their aura. Some people yeah. prostitute their bodies. It I really think, depends I on what they want to do. Either way, you have a choice. Because of feminism is, uh, or feminist is that um, the fact that men try to exploit their sex for them to get what they want. So when you start forcing a woman or when they start selling it, it's like defeating the whole purpose of feminism. Um, okay, so, so I you, think you what men need to understand it's quite sure, but I think what men need to understand is that a woman can do whatever she wants to do with her body. body and there wouldn't be a, a, a prostitute or the trade of prostitution if there was no uh, uh, what's the name now a Man. customer mm. at the end of the day so you need to live beyond trying to dictate what a woman can do with her body and what she cannot if her choice is this that is let her it, do it, it is a her calculated choice. choice yes and also i think the conversation for me should be the protection of this of these workers yeah. making it legal enough so that we give them the right hair care the right system to protect them from whatever and then even if, if you start to maybe uh, modernize that industry then you start to fish out the ones who are there out of expectation who have been forced i can get those ones out the ones that want to decide we start to give them health services and yeah. things like that because if it was a male dominated industry that would have happened mm, true Okay, that's how I wrap up this episode of Tea Time. Thank you for watching and do send your opinions via WhatsApp to 090-6057-19 or to at us at Plus TV Africa. Also watch this conversation on YouTube and all exclusive content at Plus TV Africa. My thank you will go to my co-anchors, Ife Omai and Ife Olu yeah, and me. the entire production team. Thank you for watching Plus TV Africa's Tea Time. My name remains Elsie Godwin. Please do stay safe. <laughs>